Greetings, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me. It's Christian of Standing Stones Healing, and as always, I am honored to have you here. So thank you so very much. And so I am happy to welcome you to this Facebook Live about going live on Facebook for your Reiki business. Now, this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast is about using Facebook Live for your Reiki business. And so I am going to be talking a little bit more about some of those tips and tricks that I offered in this week's podcast. And I'm happy to answer your questions about going live on Facebook as well. So welcome everyone. So nice to see you. Aklima, Diana, thank you so much. Now, if you are tuning in live, please feel free to drop it in the comments. Say hello. Let us know where in the world you are tuning in from. Even let us know where in the world, uh, your what in the world your weather is like and how your weather is going. Now here where I am in central Pennsylvania, it is a gorgeous day. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I have laundry hanging out on the line. Now I don't know about you, but I love to hang my laundry out and so because it was such a nice day, once I realized how warm it was, I was like, I got to go do laundry. <laughs> so I jumped in, did my laundry and hung it out. Very excited to hang out my laundry today. So welcome everyone. Derek, great to see you. Leslie, so thank you. Thank you so very much for joining us. Coming in from your walk, beautiful, blessed and wonderful. So thank you all so very much. So everyone in this workshop, this this is a Facebook Live workshop. This is about going live on Facebook. I'm going to share with you um, some of my experiences going live on Facebook over the years. I'm going to take you behind the scenes to help alleviate some of your fears and concerns about going live. Yes, indeed, it is a scary kind of thing. And um, I'm, I'm going to share with you some ways to help make it a little bit less scary. And big tip, it gets less scary the more you do it. And um, so I'm also happy to answer your questions as well. Now, like I mentioned, this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast is about going live on Facebook. I'm going to drop the link into the comments so that you can check that out if you so wish. Um, but there you have it. There's going to be more information in that podcast episode about going live. Now in this workshop, we're going to talk really uh, about going live on Facebook and focus on Facebook lives. Carrie, welcome. Nice to see you. Jamie, so nice to have you here as well. First time ever, Jamie. Thank you for joining. Um, and um, the reason for that is that I talk about it in the podcast, but I currently only go live on Facebook, although I've just learned that there have been some changes to Instagram, so you might see me going live there in the near future. But I do a lot of Facebook Lives, and um, I'm happy to chat with you about going live. And you are, of course, welcome to drop your questions down below. Now, I have a question for you. How many of you have already gone live on Facebook for your Reiki business. Drop it in the comments for us. Let us know if you go live on Facebook, if you have gone live for your Reiki business, and if you've gone live on another platform, drop it down for us below as well. It's great to get an idea of, um, you know, who we might have with us. If you've gone live for your Reiki business before or not, you are most welcome no matter where you are on your Facebook Live journey. So Luna's done that once. I know Derek has done it multiple times. Derek goes live plenty of times. Um, so wonderful. We, of course, are going to have a wide variety here with us and those tuning in on the replay as well. Now, Aklima, I hope that what I say today is going to help encourage you to go live because you would be amazing on lives. And so um, maybe uh, we're going to get you encouraged to do some lives today. Well, maybe not today, but today we're going to encourage you to do some lives. Okay, great. Leslie, you did did, uh, you did one on TikTok. Great. Excellent. So 
I've been going live on Facebook for, oh, a number of years now. I don't know, three and a half? I'm not sure. Um, but, um, you know, you, you just lose count at some point, you know, along the years and knowing exactly when things happened and how and for how long. <laughs> but I will say that um, I have uh, myself had plenty of mishaps on my own Facebook lives. Everything from, well, first of all, cat interruptions. Now, I gave them a treat and they may not interrupt us today but they might anyway um, so cat interruptions um, I have had um, technological challenges I can't even tell you how many times I have had technological challenges like I there are just too many to count I've gone live um, on Facebook for my Reiki business at least a hundred times and I tell you I don't know like at least like 20%, 30% of the time I've had technological challenges. So I'm no stranger to technological challenges. They will indeed happen. And I've even had something fall onto my computer. Actually, this has happened a couple of times. Fall onto my computer or the shelf that my computer is sitting on crashes and boom, it shuts it all down and it's done for. Yes, that has happened to me as well. And so I'm here to tell you that you too can go live on Facebook and you too can have successful Facebook lives, even if you have technological challenges, even if you have things crashing onto your computer and shutting the whole life down, even if you have cat interruptions, you too can have successful Facebook lives. I'm going to give you some tips for some successful Facebook lives. Does that sound good? Sound great? I'm excited to be here with you and to share the live experience with you. Now, first thing, I want to take you behind the scenes a little bit and what happens um, behind the scenes with Facebook Live. So first and foremost, when it comes to the setup, I want to encourage you that you do not need to have anything fancy. You don't need to have anything fancy. Now, I will tell you that I have a nice Yeti mic. I do enjoy this mic. I love it very much. So I have a nice Yeti mic. I can also tell you that um, I have been having Facebook Live challenges with the sound, with the Yeti mic, for whatever reason. It might be the computer's problem. I don't know. But what it means is that you can have nice, fancy equipment and you still have challenges with the equipment. So just know that. Know that the technological challenges are part of the experience and they are part of the journey. So I've got myself a nice Yeti mic. I also have a ring light, which I should have adjusted uh, before I went live and I didn't. The lighting is up here. It should be down here. Oh, well, whatever. You don't need those things. All you need is a way to go live, whether that's on your phone, on your computer, however it might be. I will tell you that one trick when it comes to a good quality image is just the lighting. It's just the lighting. That's what it is. And so probably whatever uh, device you have, your phone, your computer, probably the camera is good enough and um, that uh, it's not so much a matter of getting a good high powered quality camera as it is just about adjusting the lighting. That's really what it is about. And so all you need is um, lighting. You can even go live in the dark. You know, that might be part of your shtick or whatever. That might be like the theme of your live. Live, the dark theme or something like that, right? So it's all in your intent. It's all in what you want to bring to the live. And so that means that if you want to have you talking in your live in a dark place, that's okay. You can do that. <laughs> but you don't need anything fancy. All you need is some good lighting and a way to be seen, if that's your intent, on the live, and a way to be heard, if that's your intent as well. That's really all you need. And so I want to encourage you, first and foremost, to just banish from your mind the idea that you have to have fancy equipment. Now drop it in the comments for me. Let, let me know. Do you have fancy Fancy equipment? Are you nervous about having fancy equipment? Do you not have fancy equipment? Where are you on your fancy equipment journey? Because I want to encourage you that no matter where you are on that 
fancy equipment journey, you can go simple. It's not so much about the equipment that you use as it is about the energy that you bring, the intention, the love and light that you bring. That shines through. And that is so much more powerful than any kind of fancy equipment. So I want you to know that you've just got a ring light, perfect Luna, that's all you need. All you need is what you are bringing to the live. And so know that whatever it is you bring, what in terms of, of your equipment, what really matters is the love, the light, the energy, and the intention that you bring. So if you only bring that, believe me, you are bringing enough. So that's it with the equipment. You know, I get questions sometimes about Christian. What camera should I get? What, you know, kind of microphone should I get? And these kinds of questions. And it's like, hold on, wait a minute. Don't worry about that. Just go live first. <laughs> like just practice going live first. Now, also on the back end, I'm going to talk about practicing in one second, but also on the back end, I want you to know that there are multiple ways that you can go live on Facebook. First, you can go live from your profile page, your own personal profile. So you can go live from your profile. It's just like posting and you, instead of, you know, posting an image, just click on live video. Now you might be afraid to do that because you might think, oh my God, I'm gonna click on the live video and I'm gonna go immediately live. Like my hair isn't brushed and my lighting's not good and oh my gosh, what am I doing? Don't worry because Facebook gives you lots of warning and lots of chances before you're actually live. So when you click on live video on that post, you're not gonna go immediately live. So if you don't worry, Facebook's gonna give you a chance to brush your hair and get ready. I know I gotta make sure to do that myself. So what'll happen is you'll click go live and you'll be taken to another screen where Facebook is gonna ask you, do you wanna go live now? Or do you wanna go live and schedule an event? Now, what you do next is up to you. When I use it in this way, I just go live right immediately and I just go live in that moment. But you can indeed schedule a live. Now this live is scheduled, right? So I created an event and I shared the event. This is one of the great things about using an event for going live on Facebook is because then you can let people know. You can notify them, you can invite them. And the chances are good that you'll have more people at the live if you invite people, if you set up an event and invite people, than if you just go live in the moment live. Okay, does that make sense? And so what you can do is under your Facebook homepage, you can click on events and you can create an event. And Facebook's going to ask you, where is this event taking place? Just click on Facebook Live and you'll be able to go live in the event just like I did for this Facebook Live workshop. But it's nice because you can share it. Now, of course, you can also go live in a group. If you go live in a group, just the group members are going to be able to see it. So just be aware of that. Um, and... Um, so there are multiple ways to go live on Facebook. The way in which you do it is what resonates with you. I personally like to go live from my uh, profile page and also to do events. Now I'll do an event when it's something a little bit larger, a little bit longer, and I will go live from my own page without an event when it's something more impromptu. And so um, you can do it in whatever way resonates with you. Now, I will say that if you're worried about practicing, if you're worried about doing a good job, if you're worried about people judging you or anybody seeing it, then I might recommend trying going live, live, impromptu live, straight from your profile first before setting up an event and inviting people. <laughs> so don't be afraid to just go live from your profile and practice a little bit first. Now here's a great thing, everyone. You know, you can get yourself all set up and get going and then you start your live 
and you're like, oh shoot, I I have no idea what I'm saying. I I don't I don't I I'm I'm just fumbling all over my words. I don't like this. This is terrible. You can delete it. You can delete the live afterward. And so that means that if you do a live and you didn't like it, you can delete it. So like I told you, I had. I've had a couple of lives of things like falling and crashing on my computer and shutting the whole thing down. Yeah, I deleted that. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that was terrible and horrible and I'm deleting that for sure. So I deleted that. You can delete it too. It's absolutely okay if you delete the Facebook Live. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, but um, when you get in on the back end, then you're going to be able to uh, situate things how you want. So you'll see yourself come up on the screen. I see a little image of myself right here on my screen. I can see myself. I can see that I'm live. I can see how many people are here tuning in. And so I can see what you can see. Now, this is nice because it gives you the opportunity that, you know, you can see if your cat is like photobombing or something's going on behind you um, or you have spinach in your teeth. You can see that as other people are seeing it, too. So that's a real benefit of being able to see yourself. Um, I'll talk more about that in a second. But on the back end, you're also going to get all kinds of information. I can see how long I've been live for. So it tells me how long I've been live. Um, I can see the number of comments that people are dropping. I can see the number of reactions. I can do all kinds of things back here. Now, all of the things back here can get kind of um, overwhelming. I want to encourage you not to focus on all of those things, but to, just to rather focus on offering your message, just to rather focus on being in the moment. Now, what that means is that you'll maybe see all kinds of things happening on the back end. You'll see Facebook maybe showing you a message that is like, oh my gosh, your stream is terrible and no one can see you and it's awful. Believe me, I've gotten that message lots of times. I want to encourage you, take a deep breath and just keep going. So if you're getting messages from Facebook like, oh no, no one, you know, the, the bandwidth is terrible, the stream is horrible, it's okay. Take a deep breath and just keep going. I have found in my experience that sometimes that actually doesn't matter and you are coming through loud and clear to everyone else. Sometimes I have also found it's terrible, but you can always go back afterward and see whether or not the stream really did go through and how it was. Now, you'll also be able to see comments on the right hand side. So I can see your comments. So thank you, giving you all a shout out for your comments. Please feel free to keep them coming. Um, and I want to encourage you that um, the comments on Facebook Lives if you get enough of them and if they kind of like keep going and going and going so you have a facebook live with a lot of attendees a lot of comments the comments can scroll up to a point where you lose them and facebook like kind of makes them go away that can happen don't worry if it does you know just let people know that you are there to interact with them and to be there with them and that sometimes the comments disappear so comments are really helpful though for gauging where your audience is at for gauging the level of interaction for gauging whether or not your audience is um, really interacting and having a good experience. So drop it in the comments for me and let me know how are you doing on this live? Is this helpful for you? Is this beneficial for you? Are you enjoying this information and is this great? Um, because um, that helps you to know when you are having an interaction with your audience, how things are going for you, um, how things are going for them, which honestly is what really matters. So how the live is going for your viewers is what really matters and helping them to have an experience that is um, 
helpful for them and interactive and um, fun and informative. That's what really matters. So don't be afraid to connect with your audience in the comments. So Derek has a question. Has anyone ever had the lives not show you comments? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Sometimes I go live. I don't see the comments until after so I can't interact. Yes, that indeed does happen. I've had that happen lots of times. And I will also say that after a live, when you go back, sometimes Facebook will hide the comments. And so sometimes you'll see a comment and be like, I know I saw that person. I know they commented, but I can't find it. When you go back and look at your live, um, you might want to just filter the comments in different ways. Over on the right hand side, there's a little click down arrow where you can look at the comments from most relevant to oldest to newest, whatever. And um, you can um, filter them in different ways to try to catch all of the comments. And so on my lives, I always tell people, hey, listen, I value you. I'm honored to have you here. I will go back and look at all of your comments and respond to all of your comments. And if I miss you, it's just because I didn't see the comment. So I know after doing lives for so many years and so many times that not always are you going to see every comment. And um, if you just let your audience know that, then they'll understand. <laughs> Aklima, thank you so much. I am glad that you are enjoying this information. Awesome, awesome. Yes, Derek, that happened to you. Absolutely. Um, great. So that's on the back end, everyone. Now, when I'm going live, I don't know about you. I only have two hands. And so typing into the comments myself is kind of a struggle. And so I don't actually type into the comments unless I have a link to drop or something. So I want to encourage you, don't worry about that. You can always go back and comment on the comments later. Put the focus on being in the moment with your audience, connecting with them, encouraging them, and um, helping them on their journey because that really is what it's all about. So that's on the back end. When you're done, you're, you click on end live video. Facebook will take you to the video itself so that you can then review it. You also have the option to delete it at that time if you want to. Um, and I'm going to encourage you to maybe try not to delete it unless it was an absolute disaster because there might be something salvageable in that live. I'll talk about that in a second too. Um, and so you'll be done. It'll be over. It will show up depending upon where you went live in your feed or in the group, wherever it was that you went live. And so people will be able to view it after the fact. Now, these lives typically have a shelf life of a couple of days. So that means that once this live is over, people will be able to view it in their feeds for two days, like tops. And then it's done. It's gone. It is relegated to the archives of Facebook. And so that's one of the drawbacks to going live on Facebook or really to posting anything on Facebook is that it's gone in a couple of days typically. You know, with Facebook and the way that things filter through feeds, you might have someone comment on a post that you posted like a week ago, um, but typically a sh the shelf life of stuff is a couple of days. That's one of the drawbacks of Facebook, and that's something to just be aware of as you're doing the lives, and to be aware of um, how you might be able to or want to repurpose your lives for other things. So I'll talk about that more in a second. So um, that is um, what it's like on the back end for you. Now, some tips for an Aklima. It's not that it gets removed. It's just that it's not going to show up in feeds. Like my, my lives are still available. You can still go back and look at lives from years ago, but they're not actively showing up in anyone's feed. And unless someone is specifically searching for my videos or past events, no one is going to even probably think to look for them or care. 
on social media, social media is a, a very much an in the moment kind of experience where the more recent stuff is the stuff that gets seen more and more frequently. And that means that older stuff, like posts that I posted last year, they don't get seen anymore. Unless they show up on my memories and I kick them back out to my feed, no one's going to see it. Unless you're in a group and you do a search for something and it pops up, the chances are very good. They're very likely that no one's going to see it. So it's not that anything disappears. It's just that it's not current and not filtering through the feeds like new stuff does. This, for instance, is going to filter through some people's feeds. But a year from now, it ain't filtering through anybody's feed. <laughs> So yes, that's the difference there. So keep in mind that when you do something like this on uh, social media, it has a short shelf life. Now, like I said, I'll talk more about that in a second and helping you to maximize your, um, uh, your live um, content that you create. So, okay. Um, let me make sure I got everything I want to, I want to set up an equipment, the back end, the screen. Yes. So when you're going live, interacting with your audience is really helpful. Do you have to do this? No, you don't have to interact with anyone. If you're like, I'm terrified to look at the comments, I'm terrified to say hello, I'm terrified to interact, it's okay. Try going live a few times first, see how you feel. The chances are good that no one's going to show up anyway. I can tell you I've done plenty of lives or I've had no one show up or maybe one or two people show up. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, as a matter of fact, sometimes that might be preferable for you so that you can practice and not worry about having a bunch of people seeing your practice. So just know that when you're first starting out, you're, you're probably not going to get a lot of viewers anyway. And I will also say that even if you've been doing lives for a while and you go live impromptu without announcing it to people, you're still going to have no one show up. I have no one show up to my lives. So for instance, what I might do is that I might go live to talk about a pod that week's podcast episode. And in that live, my point is not to interact um, though, of course I will, but my point, I'm not like doing card readings. I'm not doing a guided meditation. I'm not offering a workshop. I'm just there to record the live so that people will see it later and that I can also reuse it in other ways. And so that means that, um, you may even prefer that people not show up. And I still have people who don't show up to my lives when I go live impromptu. Now, when I do an event, I always have people show up. Um, but of course, I also invite people too. So that's a big part of having people show up as well. And there are plenty of people who are going to be tuning into this live later who are not able to join us live and they'll be watching on the replay. So that always is a possibility as well. Now, afterward, of course, you're also able to share the live, so you can share it um, from um, uh, share it to your groups, share it to your business page. Um, you can even go live from your Facebook business page. But I'll be completely honest with you, I recommend going live from your personal profile rather than your business page because typically your post personal profile is going to get more traction and more um, engagement and more views. There's so much more to say about that, but I'll leave it at that for this live. Thank you, Derek. Yes, I forgot to talk about going live from Zoom. Thank you. I wanted to talk about that when I talk about the back end. So thank you so much. Yes, you can live stream from Zoom or another streaming uh, uh, program like StreamYard, for instance. The way that that works is that you're going to want to, when you log into your Facebook Live, you're going to see that there's an opportunity for you to enter what is called a stream key. And the way that you get the stream key is that you log into Zoom as well. So if you want to go live on Facebook from Zoom, 
This is really helpful for a couple of things. It's helpful if you are interviewing someone or you have multiple guests or you want to do a Zoom that then broadcasts live to Facebook. And so this is how you do it. You want to log into Facebook and log into Zoom. So do both. Now you from there you can do this a couple of ways. You can either Law, you can either get the stream key, what's called the stream key from Zoom, and put it into Facebook, or you can just go live in Zoom and then click in Zoom to stream to Facebook. Now, this stream key that you would get, if you go into Zoom and you click on, it's down on the bottom right hand side, I forget exactly what it says in the menu, but it's on the bottom right hand side on Zoom. And you will click on that down arrow. I th it might be stream. I'm not sure what it says, but it will say to you stream to and then Facebook is there. If you click on that, it will give you the stream key that you can copy and paste into the Facebook live. The way that I like to do it when I um, stream from Zoom, and I don't do this often, but I have done it in the past when I've had technical difficulties with um, going live directly in Facebook. The way that I like to do it is that I will just go into Zoom and I will click on that little menu arrow down in the right hand corner and click on stream to Facebook or go live on Facebook, whatever it says. Click on that and then from there, you'll be prompted to log into Facebook and then to say where you want your live to be broadcast, whether in a group, your personal page, or whatever it might be. Great, Derek, you found it on Zoom. Derek, drop it in the comments for us. Let us know what that says. Since I'm not streaming from Zoom right now, let us know what that says so that if anybody wants to stream from Zoom, they know what to look for um, on, uh, on Zoom. Now here's the thing with streaming from Zoom. I have found it very difficult to be able to interact in the comments. As a matter of fact, when I stream from Zoom, um, I cannot see comments and it's, it's, not, it's a little clunkier than streaming directly in Facebook and going live directly in Facebook. So streaming from Zoom into Facebook is kind of clunky. It's not ideal, um, but it's great to have to be able to do, um, especially if you have technical challenges on Facebook and then uh, you still need to go live, you can do it through Zoom. So there you have it. Thanks for asking that question. Um, so get your people interacting, some ways to get them to interact. Now you'll notice, notice what I did at the beginning of the live. I asked you, drop it in the comments. Let us know where you are in the world. Let us know what your weather is like. So asking questions and getting people to interact can be really helpful because it will get people energized, it will get them interested, and it will get them invested in the experience and it gets them connecting with one another, which is always awesome for your lives or your classes or anything that you do to have people connect and to create a sense of community. And so Getting into the comments can really help people to feel involved. Great. That is great. Thank you so much, Derek, for dropping the um, comments, the um, um, uh, uh, the process in there for us. Since, of course, I can't see it and don't know exactly what it says, like I can do it without knowing the words because I know how. But thank you, Derek, for adding the words for us. That's great. Great, Elaine. I'm glad that this is fantastic. Yes, that is exactly how you stream from uh, Zoom into Facebook. Give that a try. See how it feels to you. I personally only do it when uh, I have to. Otherwise, um, I don't like the experience as much as going live directly in Facebook. Um, so great. I also want to encourage you 
to um, have some kind of call to action for your viewers. So something for them to do, something that you would like them to do. Do you have to do this? No, but it can be really um, helpful for the people who are tuning in and it can be helpful for you too. And so a call to action might be something like, um, hey everyone, tune into my uh, latest um, video on my YouTube channel, and then drop in the link down below for them. Uh, it might be, hey everyone, here's an episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. As a matter of fact, I'm going to drop in the comments for you right now. This week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast is about going live. And so I offer some more tips in that podcast episode about going live. And so there you have it. That is a call to action where I'm encouraging you to take some action and to do something. And that is to tune into the podcast. Now, when you go live, I want to encourage you, I talk about it in this week's episode of the podcast, I want to encourage you to have some kind of reason. Like, what is your reason for going live? And the reason could simply be something like, um, hey, tune into this week's episode of the podcast. The reason could be, hey, I'm running a special right now. Check out the link to uh, book your 50% uh, off session or something like that. Having some kind of a reason means that when you go live, you have a purpose for it and you're not just like, um, I'm live now, what do I do? <laughs> your live has a reason and it has direction. So knowing what your live is for is going to be helpful for you. It's also going to be helpful because on the back end, Facebook wants you to have a title for your live. So they want you to say like title, why is it you're going live? And so when you have a title there, it lets people know what your live is about. And Facebook won't let you go live without saying what your live is about anyway. <laughs> um, so have a reason for going live. It doesn't have to be a big long thing. It doesn't have to be a big workshop. It can be a couple of minutes just to say hi, to share a story, to um, share some encouragement, to talk about an upcoming event, to talk about a special that you're running. So whatever the reason, just have a reason and it doesn't have to be a big reason at all. And, um, but it'll help to give your live direction and it will really help you to um, know what you're going to say before you start. So that is helpful. Some other things for interaction um, is that um, um, I want to encourage you to consider rather than looking at yourself because you'll show up on the screen, like I said, on the back end. I'm looking at myself right now. Am I looking at you? I am not looking at you. But when I look at the camera, I'm looking at you. So I want to encourage you to look at the camera when you do your lives and to not look at yourself. Because looking at the camera is going to help people to feel um, involved and um, to feel that, um, that, that you are more present and they are more present because it feels and it looks and it seems like you're looking at them. So I encourage looking directly at the camera. Now, great question here in the comments. Christian, how do you have those links readily available? Thank you so much, Diana, for that great question. When, before I go live, when I know what I want to encourage people to do, whether that's to check out an episode of the podcast, check out a link or whatever it is, I will have that link copied and pasted, ready to go on my clipboard. And then I get into the comments, control V, boom, there it is. Oops, accidentally I added an extra character there, but there it is. So that's just simply something that I copied and pasted before I went live that was on my clipboard because I knew I was going to encourage you to check out this week's episode of the podcast because it has more tips. And so if you're interested in this topic, the chances are pretty good that you're going to be interested in learning more about this topic and there's more about it 
in that podcast episode. And so there I have it right there for you in the comments that you can click on that link and go there straight away. So that's my magic, Diana. I just copy and paste it before I go live. <laughs> Now, of course, I've, I, I'm at that point through lots of trial and error and lots of like, wait, let me, let me take, let me type this in or, oh, let me copy. Sometimes if I have multiple calls to action, by the way, best practice, you should only have one call to action, but I break that rule all the time. So if there's something else I want to encourage you to check out, I might have multiple tabs and then just copy and paste them. Is the clipboard on your Facebook live page? No, it's just a right click copy and paste just like on your computer or a control V to copy and paste just like you would on your keyboard so there's nothing in the back end in Facebook to drop a link down in like that I mean you could sure but um, it's just a simple copy and paste that's all there is to it nothing up my sleeve <laughs> um, okay so Drop the questions for me that you have into the comments about going live on Facebook. These are excellent questions, so please keep them coming. I'm going to offer you some more tips, but I am happy to answer your specific questions as well. And remember, I'll go back afterward and take a look at your comments and respond to all of those too, so thank you. Now, after you go live, remember I said your live is going to have a short shelf life. What do you do with it? There are a couple of things that you can do with your live, depending upon what your live is and what it is about. What I will do with this live is that I will download it and I will upload it to my YouTube channel. Now, it's easy to download your live from Facebook. After your live is over and Facebook takes you, you can view the live. Up on the right hand corner, there are three dots um, on the live. If you click on those three dots, it will bring down a menu. And on that menu should be download. And so you can click there and download. Now, interestingly enough, I have found in my experience, I am not always able to download every video, which kind of annoys me. <laughs> Why Facebook doesn't allow me to download some of my videos sometimes, I don't know, technological challenge, whatever. But click on those three dots, download should populate in the menu, click to download. Now you have a copy of that live on your device. You've got that on your computer and you can do other things with it. What are some other things you can do with it? Number one, you can upload it to another social media platform like YouTube or um, upload it, um, you know, to Facebook itself again or upload it somewhere else. So you can always take that and upload it to another platform. I like to upload it to YouTube because when you upload your lives to YouTube, they have a longer shelf life. Remember I said your lives are going to last for like two days, but when you upload them to YouTube, they're going to be there for years. <laughs> so that's a benefit. Another thing that you can do is that you can take the live and use some video editing software and cut it up into smaller clips. And then you can share those clips, whether on Facebook or YouTube, another platform, wherever it might be, you've got the clips that you can use and reuse. So you don't have to use the live in its whole entirety, especially if it's a longer live. You can just use some video editing software and cut it up into smaller clips and then use uh, make multiple pieces of content out of that one Facebook Live. I may very well do that with this Facebook Live. I may very well cut up uh, this Live and um, use, uh, use the clips in different ways. So know that this one piece of content might become five pieces of content. Who knows? We'll see what I think whenever I go to uh, review it and, um, and potentially edit it. Now, here's the thing with uploading lives to YouTube. Um, you know, 
there the the guidance is that on social media that you should tailor your content for the specific platform and what that means is that um, when you upload a, a Facebook Live to YouTube, there are some who say, don't do that. I talk about that in this week's podcast, by the way. Some people say, don't do that because your Facebook Live will not be as successful on YouTube, which is a different platform that has its own, you know, likes, ways of viewing and things that people like on that platform. That's true but I do it anyway. And I do it because it just means that there are plenty of people who want to tune in and maybe aren't on Facebook or miss it on Facebook and would like to see it. And so they can see it on YouTube then. And again, they can see it for years to come. Yelena, could you create another video or workshop about YouTube, please? Thank you so much for this question. Um, you know, I talk more about YouTube in the Build Your Reiki Business program. As a matter of fact, I talk more about um, Facebook and how to use Facebook in the Build Your Reiki Business program. But, you know, maybe we'll do something on YouTube too as well, Yelena. Thank you so very much. Um, but um, by the way, you can learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Uh, that program is currently closed for enrollment, but it will open again uh, next year in 2024. Standingstoneshealing.com slash build. It is indeed the world's most comprehensive Reiki business program. Um, so great. So uh, let's see here. Anything else that I wanted to tell you about using it? Oh, one thing. Yes. Here's a little trick. So if you go to download your uh, Facebook Live video, you click on the three dots to download and you see you can't download. What the heck, Facebook? Why can't I download my video? You can do what's called M basic. Now, this is a little advanced, OK? So I apologize if I lose you, but I want to share this tip with you because this is how anytime I go to download my video from Facebook and it doesn't give me the option, this is how I do it. You go to m.basic Facebook. So it's an, you can even just Google m basic, m like m letter m, basic Facebook. And what will happen is um, you will log in, you'll see this weird, like outdated, funky Facebook mode, but you can log in in mBasic and pull up your video from your feed in mBasic and then download it that way. So there's a, a trick that you can use if Facebook's not letting you download your video. Please don't use that to download someone else's video that you do not own. Please use that to down your own, download your own videos. <laughs> Diana, thank you so much for the shout out about the Build Your Reiki Business Program. Such an honor to have you as a member. So thank you so very much. What other questions do you have about going live on Facebook? Um, interaction is helpful. Um, getting people involved and um, getting them in the comments. Um, you know, bringing the energy, bringing the love and light, your intention. Those are all really the most important things. And so... If you never have any fancy equipment, you can have powerful and successful Facebook Lives. It's not about the equipment. It's about your authenticity. It's about how you show up. It's about how you interact. Oh, by the way, one more thing I just remembered. I want to say something about bombers, Facebook Live bombers. You might get people bombing your Facebook Live. As a matter of fact, where is my bomber? I was expecting a bomber today. <laughs> and here's why I was expecting a bomber. When you do an event in Facebook, you can go see who has RSVP'd, who is coming, who is interested in joining. And you can always check that guest list to see if there's someone there who might be questionable to be like, hmm, is this person really interested in this? First of all, I don't know this person. This person isn't in any of my groups. Let me check their, their profile. Hmm, this person doesn't seem like they are really someone who might be interested in this topic. Is this someone who is a bomber? Now you can do a couple of things. You can remove the bomber. 
So you can just remove them from the event. Now this is when you are creating an event, but sometimes you might go live and you might get an impromptu bomber. This happens much less frequently because the bombers don't know that you're going live. So I want to encourage you to not worry so much about bombers because it doesn't happen terribly often, especially when you are um, going live immediately from your profile. Um, but if you're doing an event and you suspect someone might be a bomber, you can remove them. So when I checked the guest list for today, I saw someone who I thought might be a bomber. I said, hmm, this guy might be a bomber. <laughs> And I said, you know what, let's not remove him and let's see if, see if he shows up because then he's going to be a great example about how to handle a bomber. So I was actually hoping that the bomber would be here, but he did not show up. Snap. So thankfully, I didn't forget to tell you about the bombers anyway. So if you get a bomber, what I want to encourage you first and foremost is they only have as much power over you as you give them. And so if you don't give the bomber any power, they don't have any power over you. There are plenty of times when I've been doing readings and someone's been posting in the comments, get a reading from me or responding to my friends, DM me for your free reading. And it's like, hold on, wait a minute, seriously? And then, you know, I have to give them a lesson in business and be like, this is not the way that you get clients. This is not the way that you make friends. <laughs> Let's give you a little lesson here, right? And so know that when, if you get bombers, and eventually you're going to get a bomber, eventually you will get a bomber. If you do enough lives, if you do it long enough, you're going to get a bomber. So just know that you have the power to handle it. The important things are to stay cool, stay calm, stay collected, and know that you have the power to handle it. Now, how I recommend handling it is to call it out and just say, hey, you know, everyone, here we are in our live, our healing session. I see someone who is unfortunately in the comments who is not here with the right intentions. I want to encourage all of you to block that person. I'm going to block them right now. Please know that this is not a friend of mine. I do not endorse their behavior. I am blocking them and I encourage you to block them as well. And there you have it. And the people who are there showing up who want to be there will be all too happy to block that person and get back on with the live. <laughs> so just know that. Don't let them ruin your parade and um, just um, deal with them um, in in the, the best ways with love and light and they have no power over you. So um, you are in control of the live and don't be afraid to show that for sure. Um, so great, I'm glad I remembered the bomber even though we didn't have our bomber. I thought for sure I was gonna have a, a bomber. How do you block? Just click on the three uh, dots beside someone's name um, uh, or click on um, their name themselves. You'd actually go, you can hide comments, you can delete comments, but if you go to their name and then the three dots at someone's name, you can block them. Just block them. Then they can't see any of your stuff. They can't see any of your lives anymore or anything that you might do. And so that is it. Um, great. Any other questions that anyone has about going live on Facebook? Um, it is something that is really um, helpful, really beneficial for your Reiki business because Facebook loves live video. And Facebook will show your live video in people's feeds. And the more engagement your live video gets, the more that Facebook will share it and show it. And so um, live uh, video is really great. Video is really great, period, on any social media platform. But um, live video is especially really great for uh, your Reiki business. And you can go live with, you know, all kinds of things, even something as simple as just talking about Reiki, talking about your Reiki journey, talking about your experiences with Reiki, talking about how you got started with Reiki, you know, just anything and everything you can talk about in a Facebook Live. Um, and so that's it. 
Any other questions that you have about going live on Facebook? You know, there's more to say about it, of course. Um, check out the podcast episode. That will give you a little bit more information as well that we didn't cover today. Um, but always so much to say about Facebook Lives. Really, the most important thing you can do is just to do it. Just give it a try. And um, if you don't like it, or if it really sucks the first time you do it, do it again. <laughs> because um, it will get easier and it will get better the more you do it. You know, we've been going live now here for an hour. And um, um, it's because I'm comfortable with it. I can do it. I do it all of the time. It's no sweat. I get excited to do it. It's fun for me. It's so wonderful to see you and connect with you and interact with you. And so um, I love going live. I love doing lives and I love interacting with you. And so you on your Reiki business journey may also get to a point where you love doing lives as well. So Maria, thank you so much for tuning in. Such an honor. I'm glad that this has been so helpful for you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you all so very much. I'm sending you so many blessings and best wishes, and you know what's going to happen after this live. I'm going to hit end live video. I'm going to go and I'm going to delete, or I'm going to download the video right away. I'm going to upload it to YouTube and I'm going to go back and I'm going to read all your comments and comment on all of your comments. <laughs> So thank you all so very much. I'm glad that I have inspired you. Thank you, Derek. I'm glad that you are inspired to go live. Derek, you do your own lives. You know how it all works. So sending lots of blessings to your lives. Linda, great to see you. Thank you so very much for joining. Elaine, wonderful to see you as well. By the way, I want to mention that I'm going live again next week. I do have a solstice meditation. So I'm offering a live guided meditation on the solstice. And if you can't join live, yes, you know what will happen. <laughs> it'll be here. It'll be on YouTube. It will be in those places for sure. Maria, do you create a YouTube channel with your personal name or your business name? Maria, it really depends upon your goals for your YouTube channel. If your um, YouTube channel is for your Reiki business and you're going to be using your Reiki business name frequently, then you might want to name your channel after your Reiki business. But if you're looking to do some different things on your uh, channel, if you um, want to do things other than your Reiki business on your channel, and if you even think that in the future you might want to expand your business or move it in different ways, you know, when it comes to that branding piece, you can use your personal name, but it's completely up to you how you want to approach that. And so I encourage you um, to go with what feels right right now and to know that you can always change it. You can always change it. You know, my uh, YouTube channel is Standing Stones Healing. So it is um, my uh, business name. At the same time, you can always create another YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, I do have another YouTube channel. It's just called Reiki Business. <laughs> And I put uh, videos that I create on both channels as well. So great question, Maria. It's all in what feels right to and resonates with you. So um, don't be afraid to do what feels right. And you can always change your mind. You can always change things. That's always allowed. So I'm sending you all so many blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business and to your lives for your Reiki business journey. Thank you all so very much.